All right, I want to take you to Los Angeles, Port of Los Angeles, and the USS Iowa, which in a few hours will be renamed the USS Trump. <laughs> Kidding, I was just seeing if you're paying attention. But Donald Trump is going to be uh, boarding that vessel just to uh, talk about foreign policy, to talk about national security, to spell out his issues on, on, uh, on something. He says that this administration is ceding to the bad guys, and we've kind of lost our way, and all our enemies are laughing at us and mocking us and all of that. It comes about a, a week or two ahead of what we're told will be Trump uh, economic plan to be laid out, spelling what he wants to do with taxes and the like. But he is the one controlling the agenda right now uh, ahead of the big debate tomorrow night. We've got Hadley Heath Manning here and Charlie Kirk and uh, Julie Vigensky. Okay, Julie, end with you, begin with you on Trump and how he manages to, to absorb these media body blows. Uh, no matter what happens. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. It's just incredible. But I think the media is helping him because he's all we're talking about. I mean, he's about to give a foreign policy speech. It's billed as a foreign policy speech. I predict he'll have zero specifics about what he's going to do other than saying we need to empower our military. We need to America You're great very again. Jaded. You're I'm very, very jaded. cynical. I know. He has said we need to spend more on defense. We, he said we need to sort of modernize our weaponry. Well, well, he says we... He, he that's why it's the USS Iowa, by the way. To, to our Navy in particular? No, no, no. And, and I'm glad he's saying that. He hasn't talked about where specifically, how he's going to pay for it, where it's going to come out of. You know, it's, it's great to say we need to spend more on this. It's great to say that we need to strengthen our military and our Fair Navy. Enough. But where are the specifics? And I feel bad for the Republican and other Republican candidates because these guys are actually putting out platforms that nobody's paying attention to. Hadley, you know, she does have a point there that he is the guy who gets all the attention. He gets all the crowds. He cramped 20,000. People had to be turned away in Dallas at the American Airlines Arena. So he could fill a room. We know he can get ratings. We know, uh, you know, he, he generates enormous interest to their expense. Right, and, and let me remind everyone who supports limited government that no one person is going to be able to fix all of these problems. We saw this in the past with, I believe, the election of President Obama in 2008, a lot of disappointment because even when he offered a policy platform full of hope and change, he wasn't able to deliver on all of those promises. No politician will ultimately deliver on fixing every problem out there. That's up to us as the American people, and hopefully we can, we can find a leader who allows us to do those things, but this isn't really a, a, a one one size fits all solution on either side of the aisle. But there is, to Julie's point, Charlie, pressure on all candidates, the, the, the longer race drags on, to sort of spell out where they're coming from. To, to be fair, they, they don't really do that to great, great, great detail, but they do have rough platforms that, that you can sort of see on their site, get a sense of. And besides platitudes, not much detail to Donald Trump. How long can he get away with that? He can probably go a, a long time, but I will say this to the other candidates. I think it's a general positive. I mean, in the last debate, 24 million people tuned in to watch a very diverse and qualified GOP field. I think the other candidates, in some way, not all of them, the ones that are not getting attacked, should be thanking Trump for the increased me media visibility on the Republican field. I mean, look at CNN. They can't stop talking about anyone that talks about Trump or Donald Trump. I think it's a good thing that Trump is getting all this increased coverage, but also the candidates are benefiting as a whole in the party well, as well. Well, they do spend a lot less time talking about Bernie Sanders and the inroads he's making on Hillary Clinton, but Bernie Sanders did get some news, Julie. Why don't you ask you to yeah. this? With this ambitious spending program, so he's talking about 18 trillion. He did not say it would be in a year, but the Wall Street Journal crunched it out and said that that's what it comes down to: 18 trillion in new spending, and that just so happens to be the level of our national debt. He doesn't care. Well, <laughs> first of all, the, Wall the Washington Post made a good point. It's not 18 trillion in new spending. It's 18 trillion, 14 of which is for what they say. The Washington Post says is for this universal health care plan. That's not new spending. That's spending that's going on right now. We're just spending it out of different pockets. Well, all right. So the so, journal stands by its numbers right. that it's going to but be. But why new spending? Because the problem is this. You're, but he, what, but not he, yes. much about cutting spending, right? Well, he's, no, no. He's not talking about cutting spending okay. at all. Okay. But it, I, think it, I, I quibble with the 18 million trillion number because okay. that number. Well, seems, it just yeah. seemed to be so, so coincidental well, with the debt. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That know, would be bit. too weird. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Hadley, Heath, I'm looking at that, right? And I'm thinking. Uh, Regardless of what you're saying, I think there's a lot to what Julie is saying here, but, but if, why am I not, if I'm Hillary Clinton coming out and, and, and ripping him on that one and, and saying, all right, specifically, let, let's talk about doing this in a more targeted fashion, regardless of whether it's 18 trillion, regardless of whether it's trillions more, the money isn't there, here's a plan. She's not doing that. No other Democrat is doing that. 
That's right, and this plan from Bernie Sanders makes Republicans uh, relatively look like the party of fiscal conservatism and fiscal responsibility. When you, when you talk about spending $18 trillion over 10 years, and of course he's got plans to raise taxes as well to pay for part of this, it reminds me of the quote from Margaret Thatcher that the problem with socialism is that well, eventually but, but you run Charlie, out of other the people's issue money. Well, he doesn't have to do that. He's popular specifically because he doesn't, right? Sure, yeah, he doesn't have to offer those specifics. I'll say this, I will quibble about the 18 trillion figure that Bernie Sanders put forward. I think it's too low, because he's okay. arguing, he says, free college and free this. Have you ever heard of a government program with its stomach that's full? They always want more, they're demanding more money, it's never, ever enough. Wait, so wait, what, do you, what do you mean a stomach that's full? That's a cheap shot, meaning that man. They're always, no, they're, I know what meaning you mean. That, I know what you mean. They're always right, hungry, they want more money, it's never here. enough. We'll focus on this a lot more. The five is next.